Chuck Shock, I'm Vice President of TW Local 562. and the public and, and people have to be aware that this is a second bankruptcy. Our first bankruptcy was in 2003, a voluntary bankruptcy, which we gave up concessions of $1.6 billion a year annually, which the company continues to enjoy. Well, in 2003, we had 13,600 approximately members of the m and group. We now have 9,600 approximately. So we lost 4,000 jobs uh, on top of the concession. So when we talk about bankruptcy, I, I want people to understand we already had a bankruptcy, a reorganization just voluntarily. Now here we are in 2012, claiming to go through the first bankruptcy proceeding and it's not. It's the second one. And this one here is, is going to hurt even more than the first one because they want another $2 billion on top of that. We, approximately, if you add it all up, all in, about $145,000 per person has been sacrificed in pay and benefits. That is a, a huge thing to give up and has affected us greatly. Now they want more. We want us, our, our pension and our retiree medical We'll have to work here for until they have to carry me out of here because I won't be able to afford to retire. The PBGC placed a $91 million lien against American Airlines assets in South America. How much assets is down there? Is there a billion dollars in assets in South America? We know there's a $30 million townhouse in London. What are we, are we not being told about what's outside the country? Also, I want to talk about the cost savings. They came out in the newspaper that American Airlines in the fourth quarter lost $1.1 billion. Okay? People, the general public think that's in cash. Okay? But if you break it down, as they did in the newspaper, $725 million was a write down in aircraft because they're not worth what they used to be. They also wrote off $118 million restructuring term, $102 million aircraft financing renegotiation, and $14 million in professional fees. And that equates to almost a billion dollars that they wrote off. So what I want the people to understand is that what you see in the paper, 1.1 billion, is not in cash. Some of it's paper. They're redoing the terminals. They're, they're, they're getting, buying new trucks. They're doing uh, corporate capital expenditures that come off the top as well. So these are things that they're doing to help the company, but they're using it against the workers to make it sound like when we, we want to ask for something, that we're asking for something when they lost $1.1 million, and it's not really the case. So here we are today to talk about, you know, we want a fair contract, we want industry rate. We, all we want is what we've earned and due to us, and we want the people to understand that we're not asking for too much, that our families have been greatly impacted, and all we want is the company to recognize us. We do our job every single day. We don't have the luxury as aircraft mechanics and related to come in and not do our job. So it's not a labor issue as they claim it to be. If it was, identify to me where the labor issue is. If it's not, it's mismanagement. We've given billions of dollars in concessions, and if, if management squanders that and goes bankrupt twice, well, how is that labor's issue? It's not. And it's time for us to recognize it's not and give us a contract and we can go forward with our families. What do we want? Stop the corporate greedy! 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 What do we want? What do we want? What do we want? Stop the corporate greedy! Stop the corporate greedy! demonstrating today for a, a fair and equitable contract from American Airlines. We've given back in 2003 a lot of money and a lot of work rule concessions. 
and it's time that uh, that we got something out of it. We got uh, they want to take our retired medical away, which means I'm going to have to keep working. They want to take uh, ship jobs overseas, which uh, is, is not very good for the whole country, and especially the American Airlines employees shipping jobs overseas. We just want a fair and equitable contract, and we want them to negotiate in good faith. Ten years ago, we voluntarily gave over $1.6 billion in concessions for American Airlines for every year. We've been doing our jobs every single day while corporate management is just squandering all the money time and time again, not even want a billion dollars more. We like it said it's very unfair and it'll never stop unless you stop the corporate greed, what American Airlines does continually. So you're talking about $1.6 billion annually. Uh, didn't we also give a cost incentive where Tulsa saved the company $500 million a year, yes, we did. the Lions saved $95 million a year, still going on, and AFW saved $67 million a year. So on top of the $1 billion, we're also giving another $600 million a year in, in cost initiative savings. Now here in 2011-12, they want another billion dollars. Yes, so is this, is this a labor issue? No, it is a management issue. We make the company run more efficient every day, and they still keep blaming us for the inefficiency of the company. It's coming from the top. Period. Bottom line. Okay, so there's, there's about 500 of us that all left good jobs to come here. I, in my interview, I, I never wanted another interview in my entire life. I want to do my 25 or 30 here and stay. It's the premier airline in the world. I mean, who wouldn't want to work for this company? It's kind of insulting the fact that you're going to make 500 of us leave jobs, good jobs, to come here just to get rid of us, but to use us to make a labor more expensive for the company, to make concessions from the senior mechanics. I don't, I don't think that's right on either end of the spectrum. Making us leave jobs to go look for new jobs, and it's not like jobs are dime a dozen. So if the company knew that this is the road they were going to take, uh, bankruptcy and concessions, do you think that you feel you've been duped? I, I just think it was kind of an immoral decision to make. I mean, I, I'm a capitalist. I mean, I'm, I'm all for free market and everything, but you, know, you have to have morals in it as well. It's not a right thing to uproot 500 people and have them move across the country away from friends, family. I'm commuting. I know every, but all the other new guys I work with commute too. So we get to be away from our families just to get laid off and have to go back to jobs that we've already been filled. So the CEO of the new CEO of American Airlines, who's been with the company for years, has made it very clear that his goal was to take American to the car wash. And I interpret that as cleaning. In other words, cleaning the dirt off of American Airlines. So I guess we're the dirt. 9,000 members of the TWU are the dirt of this airline. So in your opinion, America has no intentions of wanting to save jobs. They just want to make more money for themselves. It's all about corporate greed. It's all about driving up profit margins. And uh, you shouldn't be allowed to do that at the expense of the people that have been here a lifetime. <laughs> And it's not the fact that the TWU members of your local weren't doing the job, they just want to just let it go because they want to make more profit. Look, in 2003, we gave up an incredible amount of money to keep this company afloat. We believe their promises, and they've broken every single promise to us. And, and on top of that, to me, the biggest crime is that the people that plunged us into bankruptcy are the ones that are going to be responsible for getting us out of this bankruptcy. It makes no sense. You folks failed. I don't see any reason for you to stay on. So, you know, basically saying, was it RP, the chief financial officer, on the on the on the car on the car day, Then he got promoted to CEO, and wasn't Horton the CEO, the chief financial officer? Now he's the he's the CEO. Does it seem like a cycle? Yeah, it's just the same characters over and over again, and I don't understand what makes them think that this time they're going to be successful. They haven't been successful since 2003. And now, exiting bankruptcy, uh, right now there's, the executive stocks are worthless, right? Because they, they, they're, they're going to go under the stocks. But when it comes out of bankruptcy, the, the bonuses will be there and executive bonuses will be there for the executive officers. But what's going to be left for us? Look, Chuck, I, I'll be honest with you, my personal opinion here, I don't really care about executive bonuses. Yeah, it's unfortunate that we live in, in a society that allows these kind of things. My concern is the 9,000 TWU jobs that are going to be lost, and there's no reason for those 9,000 jobs to be lost. You want to take your bonuses, that's fine, but don't hurt the people that load these aircraft, that fix these aircraft every day. We're out here today because of corporate greed. 
We're sick and tired of management being too fat, making all the money and giving nothing to us. They want to lay us off, they want to outsource all our jobs. I think we should start outsourcing all their jobs because they're incompetent. Starting from the management here at JFK is the worst I've ever dealt with in my 33 years with American Airlines. Uh, so I hope they start. I got rid of Tom DeValle and his group. They got to work their way down and flush it out. All the other airlines are successful because they don't have 50 or 60 VPs sticking around with their fingers up there. That's our problem. We get rid of them and we run this place the way it's supposed to be and we'll be in good shape. Well, speaking about management, uh, if we, if we want to emulate the airline after another airline, what management structure has this kind of vast VPs and, and upper management? What other airline has this type of? Nobody does. That's why they're making money. I even asked Mark Nigerian once, does, if you want to compete with Delta Airlines, why do we have so many VPs? And he wouldn't answer that question because he wants to be one one day. Hopefully he doesn't. So the, the company's fat with, with management. How is how is the, they, they keep saying in the paper how labor is the issue. Labor, labor is, the, is the problem with American Airlines. How does, how does that fit with you, that labor is the issue, that we're the cause of the downfall of American Airlines? Listen, I've been here 33 years. They got rid of sanitation and they hired companies, paid them $3.7 million to do their job and they don't do it. They look the other way, the places are filthy. It's, 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 it's disgusting what they do. They're taking away American jobs. It's corporate greed. Again, take, take away their jobs, see what it's like. That's what they should do. Get rid of management. Now, in, in lieu of that, what about the concessions of 2003? Is this our, is this our first bankruptcy in 2012? In 2003, they claimed there was bankruptcy, and the company and the union agreed to rape us, take all our benefits and our money away, and they haven't given us anything back in nine years. So right now, they want to take more away from us, and I have a problem with that because I spent my whole life with this company to leave here with benefits and medical, and they're trying to take all that away. It's a shame. And if they're going to take it from us, I think we should take theirs away, take their jobs away, and get rid of them. I said, outsource them. Bring some Chinese company in here to run management. Maybe we'll make money. Okay, we're here at uh, Kennedy Airport on a picket, and as uh, you see, we have these bricks walking around in a circle. Because that's what the senior vice president of uh, human resources referred to us as bricks. It, w it was not a Freudian slip. He meant it. Because that's what the company considers us, inanimate objects with bricks. I, it's, this is as much about American jobs as it is about uh, American Airlines jobs. That uh, we want the public to know that uh, American Airlines, through its parent corporation, AMR, is going to petition the courts to try to outsource 14,000 jobs, over 1,000 here in the New York area. And it's all about that fact that 80,000 American Airlines families has made the sacrifice for over the last eight years, giving back billions of dollars. Now, the corporation took this money, and instead of using it to turn around the company, it seems that all they used it for was to give themselves raises and bonuses. And now here we are eight years later, and they're asking us to give up these livable jobs. And people have to ask themselves, what would they rather have? 80,000 employees making livable wages in their community, paying off mortgages, purchasing automobiles, refrigerators, washers and dryers, or would they rather have that money go to a few greedy corporate heads? And where would they do with the money? Our money supports the community. We use it to buy goods and services, and also it increases the tax base, which allows the gov local governments to hire policemen, firemen, and teachers. Now, this also gives our elected representatives increased tax revenues that they can use on our behalf to improve our quality of life and the quality of life of all Americans. So we ask all American citizens, all American workers to stand with us because our fight is your fight. Stop blaming your fuelers, stop blaming your laborers, stop blaming the cost of fuel, and look at yourselves for a change and just really realize you're the problem, not us.